talk about calorimetry which is part of thermochemistry you can see this video and other videos on the website learnideas.com we start first defining heat heat is represented by Q heat is one form of energy and other forms of energy can be also transformed into heat like the solar mechanical chemical nuclear electrical and radiation we know that energy is conserved where the heat loss is equal heat gained because energy is neither created nor destroyed thus our unit of heat is the joules other units also they can be used like the calorie and the British thermal unit in the calorimetry we need first to define heat capacity heat capacity is represented by C what C it's the amount of the heat needed to raise the temperature of a body by one degree or one Kelvin and here one degree Celsius is the same as one Kelvin by scale so we can use both in questions we have two types of heat capacity molar heat capacity which is the heat capacity per mole and the specific heat capacity which is the heat capacity per gram C is defined as the heat absorbed divided by increase in temperature different substances they have different heat capacities for example like the water it has a heat capacity of 1 calorie per gram degree Celsius which is equal to 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius so here we can see that every one calorie is equal to 4.18 joules and we can use this conversion factor in the questions if needed the third term used here is the enthalpy change delta H delta H can be calculated by different techniques heat content bond energy calorimetry and Hess's law but in this video we'll talk about the calorimetry so what is calorimetry calorimetry is the science that deals with the heat measurement which is Q whether absorbed or released in direction depending on observing the temperature change which is delta T the device that is used to measure experimentally the heat involved in a chemical reaction or a physical change also is called the calorimeter we have two types of the calorimeters we have the bomb calorimeter and the coffee cup calorimeter we'll start first with the bomb calorimeter which is the more expensive one in this calorimeter we will see that substance to be burned will be added in a small container or cup here where electrical spark can be given by ignition wires so this substance that is burnt will release heat this heat will be transferred into the water surrounding this chamber and then there is a stirrer or a fan that can rotate and then the water will be circulated around having a uniform temperature in all its parts and then temperature is recorded by using the thermometer here we the chamber is uh, doesn't uh, expand is not able to expand so therefore we have no change in pressure and work is not done so the volume is constant here and at the end when we find delta T we can find the heat of the reaction how can we find delta H first of all heat of substance which is Q it's equal to the heat capacity C times the change in temperature delta T so Q is equal to C delta T and this is the heat involved while the enthalpy change it is the heat released divided by the number of the moles of the substance burned so delta H can be equal to the heat Q divided by N and here we put minus because the reaction is exothermic so in total it will be minus C delta T over N now we'll solve a question in the in the bomb calorimeter where we have 0 0.5 grams of octane C8H18 is placed in a bomb calorimeter 11.3 kilojoules are needed to change the temperature of the calorimeter and its content by 1 degree Celsius when the octane is ignited in the presence of the oxygen the temperature increases by 4.5 degrees Celsius calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoule per mole of the reactant so let's see how we can solve this question so 
So here we have given 0 0.5 grams of C8H18, 11.3 kilojoules, of one degrees in one degree Celsius. So this is the heat capacity, and it's not the specific heat capacity or the molar heat capacity because here it's not given per gram or per mole. Delta T is 4.5 degrees Celsius. We want to find delta H, so directly we can apply the formula delta H equal to minus, minus because it's exothermic, minus Q over N, minus C delta T over N, N is the number of moles of C8H18, because moles are not given, we, we are given the mass, so it's mass over molar mass, 0.5 over 114, this is the moles, and then we apply C and delta T, and the answer at the end will be minus 1.16 times 10 power 4 kilojoule per mole, since we take it to three significant figures. So here we can see the solution. You can stop this video and then take notes. So the answer at the end is minus, so the reaction is exothermic. The other type of the calorimeter is the coffee cup calorimeter. This coffee cup calorimeter is cheap because we can just make it at home, in the lab, very simple two cups of styrofoams put together the external one is put just for extra insulation while the reaction will occur in the inner one here the solution will be mixed together we have a stirrer to make the temperature uniform and we have the thermometer where the temperature can be recorded and also here it should be uh, covered with a lid it's very important to prevent the exchange of the heat in such a calorimeter the we are working here under constant atmospheric pressure so we have a constant pressure while in the bomb calorimeter we have a constant volume so this calorimeter is used to determine delta h of the reaction occurring in solutions we will take now an example how we can find delta h in determining in solutions for for example let's say for exothermic reactions occurring in solutions such as mixing acid with base also we can apply endothermic reaction here it's fine so but in case of acid base the reaction is exothermic so delta H of the solution is minus Q over N which is minus MC delta T over N and here the mass the total mass of the solution but since the mass of the solution is not given instead we have the volume we have the total volume of the solution we have the density so it's density times volume will be give the mass times c times delta t over n and here it's the number of the moles of the limiting reactants so here delta h is the heat of the reaction negative signs given just for the exothermic q amount of the heat involved n is the number of moles of the limiting reactant so, and we can get it by c times v because in most cases concentration or molarity is given and don't forget here that the volume should be used in liter or decimeter cube m is the total mass of the solution and we can find it by the density of the solution which is gram per milliliter times the total volume of the solution also here don't forget it should be used in milliliter c is the specific heat constant and delta t is the change in the temperature Fifty milliliter of one molar HCl at 25.5 degrees Celsius. It's mixed with 50 milliliter one molar sodium hydroxide, also at the same temperature. After making stirring, the temperature is increased to 32.5 degrees Celsius. Calculate the enthalpy change of the reaction. Given the density of the solution is the same as that of water, one gram per milliliter, and C of the solution is 4.18 joules per gram degree celsius so let's find how we can solve this question so we have 50 milliliter one molar at 25.5 degrees celsius of hcl mixed with sodium hydroxide 50 ml one molar also 25.5 degree the final temperature is 32.5 density is 1 gram per mil, C is 4.18, we want to find delta H of 
the mixture of the reaction that occurs between acids and bases. The reaction between acids and bases is called neutralization reaction. So H plus plus OH minus gives H2O. This is the net ionic reaction. And since that final temperature is more than the initial, in this case, the reaction is exothermic. So delta H is negative. And that's why we put here delta H minus Q over N. So it's equal to minus MC delta T over N. While M, it's the mass of the solution, the total mass of the solution. And we can get it from density times V total. And here it's one times 50 plus 50 because we're using the volume in milliliter because the density is given in gram per milliliter. So the total mass of the solution is mass M equal to 100 grams. Delta T 32.5 minus 25.5, which is 7. So we can just, we are replacing the numbers here. So M is 100, 4.18, and C delta T is 7. N is the number of moles of the limiting reactants. What we can see here that both of them are having the same concentration with the same volume. This means we have same number of moles, and they are reacting in the ratio of 1 to 1. So in this case, both of them are limiting. So we can get the number of moles of only one of them, which is C times V. 1 times V, which is 50, 0 0.05 liters. We use here the volume in liters, 0 0.05 moles. And then we can substitute it in delta H. And it's equal to minus 585 to 0 joules per mole reaction, minus 58.5 kilojoules per mole reaction. And this is the solution. You can also stop it and take uh, some notes. Since we can apply the coffee cup calorimeter to find delta H for chemical changes, we can also find, use it to find it for physical changes. For example, like the melting process. Melting process, but so what's the amount of the energy needed here? The latent heat of fusion is the amount of the heat needed to change a substance from the solid state into liquid state at a constant temperature and pressure. If the latent heat of fusion is given in joule or kilojoule per mole, then delta H is equal to the number of moles times the latent heat of fusion. If it's given per gram, then delta H is equal to the mass times the latent heat of fusion. In the same way, this can be applied for the boiling process the latent heat of vaporization here, it's the amount of the heat needed to vaporize a substance from the liquid state to the gas state occurring at a constant temperature and pressure. Same thing, if latent heat of vaporization is given per mole, then it will be N times the latent heat of vaporization. If it is given per gram, then it is mass times latent heat of vaporization. We can see one question here, we want to find uh, the amount of the heat needed to change 40 grams of the ice at minus 20 degrees Celsius into steam at 120 degrees Celsius. And given that we have C of the ice, C of water, and C of steam, specific heat, and we have the latent heat of fusion, latent heat of vaporization. So let's see how we can solve this question. As for the change, we know that, first of all, the ice is a solid at minus 20. Till zero, it will also remain as a solid at zero. Then here we have a change, phase change. It's melting between solid and liquid at zero. So here we have both. Here we have change in the state. So in one, we have only change in temperature for the solid. Here we have phase change. In three, we have only liquid and we have change in temperature from zero to 100. Then here we have the phase change changing from liquid into gas at 100. And then here in five, step five, we have change in temperature of the gas from 100 to 120. So usually in the steps where in one, three, five, where we have only change in temperature, 
we can apply the formula Q is equal to MC delta T. While in the phase change, the amount of the heat needed, for example, like in the melting, it will be equal to the mass times the latent heat of fusion, where in the vaporization it will be Q is equal to the mass times the latent heat of vaporization. So what will be the total amount needed then? So the total amount here will be equal to the heat needed in step 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And as we said that 1, 3, 5 is only change in temperature. So we have MC delta T. So here for Q1, it's MC delta T for the ice. In Q2, we have change in the phase. So it's mass times latent heat of fusion. In 3, it's only liquid. So it's MC delta T of the liquid water. Then in step 4, we have the mass times the latent heat of vaporization and here we have MC and in 5 we have MC delta T of the gas because we have only change in uh, temperature in the gas state and then we apply the formula here don't forget that C of the ice is different than C of the water different than C of the gas so each one will be added here in its position so mass is 40 in all C here is 0 0.5 for the ice Delta T is from minus 20 to 0, so it's 20. Here it's 40 times latent heat of fusion. The temperature is constant, it's not used here. MC delta T for the liquid in step 3. It's 40, the mass 40, C is 1. And the temperature change here is from 0 to 100, so it's 100. Then the latent heat of vaporization times the mass, this is because the temperature is constant. Then for the gas, 40 times C of the gas, which is 0 0.5 times 20 which is the change between 100 and 120 and at the end the answer is 29540 calorie or 29.5 kilocalorie at the end thanks for watching and sharing this video